what advice do you have for someone that wants to get into you know, personal training or, or nutrition? What what tips do you have for someone that would is watching this now and they're thinking that's exactly what I want to do with what you've done? Get the education. It really is based on education and in terms of trying to do your own business and trying to do your own thing, you really need to build up a good reputation. <laughs>
Um, I really did want to start um, um, really getting into the health and wellness field. So actually, after I worked um, in Fort Pierce at the outpatient clinic, I worked for a few years physical therapy and doing outpatient, and then I opened my own business. And um, that was definitely challenging. Um, I had my own company for about 12 years, Body Basic Sports Medicine. I did private rehab. Um, I did personal training, nutritional counseling. I did contract work. And I had that up until about a couple years ago. So how was that experience getting started? Because anytime you're an entrepreneur and start your own business, it's mm -hmm. obviously very difficult to get going. So how was that for you? It was uh, definitely difficult. I worked with a friend of mine for a while out of out of his place, kind of built up a clientele, did some of the contract work here and there, and really with something like training and health and fitness, it's word of mouth. So, you know, I had to do my own marketing, did a lot of marketing, got some good clientele built up to where, you know, I was, I was getting busier and busier. What advice do you have for someone that wants to get into you know, personal training or, or nutrition, what what tips do you have for someone that would is watching this now and they're thinking that's exactly what I want to do with what you've done? Get the education. It really is based on education and in terms of trying to do your own business and trying to do your own thing, you really need to build up a good reputation, build up a good clientele that will refer you. Once they know you know what you're talking about and they trust you and you build up that trust with somebody, they start referring you out and say, hey, I've got this great person and, and that's kind of how you need to build it. So it really is... It's a slow process, but if you build your reputation and keep it, you'll be successful. So when did you know you'd become a professor? I've always kind of been that teacher type person. I started being a preceptor. I worked at a local university down here a little bit, and I started taking on student athletic trainers at one of the sites that I worked at. And I loved it, and they offered me a job teaching um, CPR, first aid, because I'm a CPR instructor. So I was teaching um, CPR uh, first aid and stuff uh, at a local college, and then I started teaching a couple classes, and I just really loved education. You've obviously accomplished a tremendous amount in your life up to this point. What are some things that you feel like, like some goals that you've accomplished that you're, you know, you're very proud of? I was very proud of my company. Um, I did keep my company running uh, for 12 years in all different aspects, you know, starting with personal training, moving into nutrition. I got certified as an ergonomics instructor, so I started going into some companies and doing ergonomics and helping them set up desks, you know, for computers and helping them people who had neck pain and wrist pain and carpal tunnel and stuff like that. Um, to, you know, contracting people out to big events that they had, you know, getting other athletic trainers in the county and kind of, you know, hey, do you want to do this? Do you want to do that? And that was kind of a big accomplishment for me. What's some goals that you have today moving forward? I would like to continue in academia. Um, I am a full-time professor now, and I really do love it. So I would like to, to continue and keep building the program that I'm in and, and make it more successful, educate more students. I like seeing students go out and get a job and be successful, especially in the health and wellness industry. What tips do you have somebody that's looking to get more healthy? <laughs> tips? Um, it's really about a healthy lifestyle. You need to make some changes. You need to be okay with those changes. Um, I'm not perfect. I tell people, most people aren't perfect. You know, you, you've got your stuff, but you've got to be willing to change and, and, you know, start little by little. Start slow. Big changes are hard to keep, but if you start slow and make small changes throughout, then it's a little bit easier. For someone to get more active, what I've always recommended is just start. Even if it's like, start. you know, for 10 minutes in your house doing jumping jacks, a walk around the block, just start doing something. Go for a walk. Right. Yeah, that's, that's exactly what I tell people. Take the dog out for a walk. Take the kids out for the walk. Go play with the kids at the park. You know, I used to take um, my kids and I used to go to the park and run around the park and hang on the bars and jump up and, you know, do all mm -hmm. that stuff. Again, it's little bits of exercise. You know, taking your dog out for a walk is exercise for you and for the dog. So those couple minutes where you're like, oh, I want to sit down, watch TV, just try to get up and, and move and do something. Put music on, dance in the house. Again, it's, it's all a form of exercise, and it's, it's a start. And you start feeling better about yourself, and once you start feeling better about yourself, you want to kind of do more and more. Right, do a little bit more, a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Talk about the importance of, of water, because I think it's one thing people just, the, the vast majority of people don't drink enough water, and it's so important. I drink about three liters of water a day. Uh, water is extremely important to stay hydrated. Your body is 70 to 80% water. 
so you really need to keep hydrated um you know again it can keep you from overeating a lot of times when you're hungry you're really just thirsty so water is is really good for you know especially for that and it does help rid your body of toxins okay you need to flush your body out every day is and as far as meals what do you recommend for um a meals to, for someone that's you know they're looking to um you know lose weight for example do you, do you recommend uh smaller portions more times a day or is there something that you specifically recommend that you've that's <clears throat> majority of people that you've seen has worked for you I try to, when I work with people with this, I try to work with what works for them. Everybody's got a different schedule. There's kids, there's jobs, everybody's got different times. So whatever is the easiest to work with you, essentially the bottom line is calories in, calories out. So whether you're intermittent fasting or whether you're eating small meals a day, whichever one works better for you, you just need to stay where your calories need to be. If you create that calorie deficit, whether it's with food or exercise, doesn't matter which one, then you'll be successful. Intermittent fasting has become very popular and very yes. effective. If you would talk a little bit about that. There are several different ways to do it. You can do uh, you know, 24 hour fast, you can do 15 hour fasts. Um, they recommend when you're doing it to start off slow, start with maybe um, a 10 hour fast, then move up to a 12 hour fast. And really all it is is just eating all your calories in more of a, sh a shorter period of time. So you're not overeating. So you're allowing your body time to kind of process stuff. It, it's not bad for your body. It's been proven to help with, you know, hormone production and, and decrease incidence of diseases. Again, you know, you got to start slow, work mm -hmm. what's best for you. I think one of the reasons it's been so effective is because it teaches people to eat in a less amount of times, as yeah. you say, and you're not waking up first thing eating mm -hmm. and you're not eating last thing at night, which some people fall in the habit of just basically eating all day. So night eating is, is a trigger for a lot of people. And that's tough. That is, that's, yeah. that's definitely, and it. that's really all it is. So if you're, if you're one of those people who get up early, you may want your, you know, eight to 10 hours of eating to be in the morning. Okay. If you're someone who, you know, works late and you know you have to eat you know eight nine o'clock at night then you kind of move that that eight to ten hour time period a little bit later so that's the one good thing about it is you can kind of move your hours however it works for you but it has to work for you so so what's some goals that you have moving today forward um really i i, I i'm passionate about education i really just want to keep educating people and educating educating students um, on health and wellness it really is becoming a big topic and it really is important um, i'm a big proponent of you know exercise is medicine food is medicine you know try to get healthier because it really is, does make you happier and it's it's better so really my goal is just to try to impact as many people as possible that's in great. the industry that's great what about uh, personally, you want, anywhere you want to travel or some things you want to do that you haven't done yet? I always want to travel. Um, yeah, you know, it's always been a dream of mine to go, you know, to Europe, travel internationally. Um, you know, hey, being a French major for seven years, I've always wanted to go to France. Um, so there are some travel plans, hopefully later on. So every time you see someone that's successful, you don't, a lot of times you don't see the people behind them or the people that supported them or the coaches or mentors or people that kind of <laughs> helped give you a little boost. Who's some people that you could share with us that have helped you get to where you're at? I would have to say uh, my family. My family has always been very supportive of me, uh, supported everything that I do. Um, I've had, you know, professors in the past. I've had bosses in the past that have always been very supportive as well. And as long as you have that good support system, wherever it comes from, it, it definitely helps. Talk about the importance of, you said support system, the importance of having an accountability partner with your health and fitness goals. Um, it's a lot easier. Um, you know, the, some of the hardest things that I deal with is that husband and wife where, you know, the wife wants to get in shape and the husband's like, no, I want to, you know, do this, eat that. Um, and it's hard. But if the two of you can work together, it's definitely easier to be more successful. Um, you know, working out with a friend. That's why group fitness training has become so popular because you're working out with other people and you're supporting other people and, you know, good job and how can I help and, you know, let's go get something healthy instead of, you know, let's stop at fast food, you know, kind of those things. So it definitely is helpful to have some sort of support system. Group, group uh, training, group fitness is definitely on the rise and mm -hmm. it's become more and more popular because of those reasons. What's some workouts that you, you like or you recommend or that someone gets together with a group or start a group 
and, and, and uh, do? Well, for me personally, um, I, I love to box. So that is kind of my form of exercise now, so is kickboxing. Um, and I do love that. I am, you know, again, a big believer in HIIT training. Um, you get a lot of exercise in a short period of time, so it's not taking up your whole day. You're looking at 30 minutes, high intensity. It's better for the body. You burn more calories, and you keep burning more calories throughout the day, and that's kind of the effects of, of HIIT training. Yeah, so those that, that don't know what HIIT training is, you've basically explained it, but just mm -hmm. uh, elaborate a little bit more. So It's high-intensity interval training. It's bouts of really intense training or intense exercise, and then you kind of back off a little bit. It's really healthy for the heart, allows the heart to work harder and then come down and then work harder. And as we do that kind of overload principle, um, it tends to make the body healthier. And again, you can do it in a short period of time. So when you kind of look at exercise as a whole, you're looking at high intensity, a shorter duration, or you can do a lower intensity for a longer duration. Um, it tends that high intensity training gives you a higher calorie burn in general. And a lot of times there's different ranges, but typically mm -hmm. I hear a lot, 30 minutes or so. You said it continues to work throughout the day. Talk a little bit more about that. It raises your metabolic rate throughout the day. So you continue to burn calories up to 16 hours after your workout because your body has to recover. So as your body's recovering, um, your body's using more energy to recover from that high intensity workout. Awesome. So you'll, let's get back into, um, you know, the students for mm -hmm. a second. You know, you love teaching the students. You're, you have a passion for education and teaching. T tell us about just how that feels to be able to educate, you know, and inspire. Um, I really love to see um, students successful. It's, it's funny, I can walk around town and I'll run into students or athletes that I had from schools from 10 years ago that look at me and they go, I know you, you used to be my athletic trainer. And I see a lot of them going to school for athletic training. I see a lot of them going into the fitness realm. Um, they're like, hey, I opened up my own business. Hey, I did this. And it's really great to see them successful. The students I have now, which I do employ them, I get them jobs and they're very happy. And I see a lot of them moving from their initial job into bigger jobs and better jobs and, and really enjoying what they're doing. And they're, they're impacting like I am. And that's kind of my way to, hey, teach them to you know, impact the world in health and fitness. And then you take it here and then you know, just kind of carry it on. It's that kind of pay it forward. You mentioned athlete. What do you think separates a great, a good from a great athlete, or a great from a good athlete? What do you think it is? Two or three things: discipline, focus, whatever. What do you think those things that really separate the good from the great? There's a couple things that that you can look at. You can look at the psychological aspect. You know, great athletes do have discipline. They have um, motivation. They have passion. They love what they do, and and you have to have that to be a great athlete because it takes a lot of hard work. Um, practices, 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 you know, and performing well. Um, there is also a genetic component, you know, we're all built different ways, so there's that physical component that, you know, comes to play with a great athlete. What is anything else you haven't mentioned that you would like people to know about you? Not really. I, I'm pretty much an open book. People that know me um, know that I have a massive passion with health and fitness, of course. Um, I've been successful in education. I've been successful with my business, um, personal training, and that's really it. Um, that's kind of where my world lies. I love to work out. You know, people at the gym, you know, same thing. Ask what I do. I'm in the health and fitness industry. So, so one more tip for someone that's just getting started in the health and fitness industry. If you had one more tip to share with them, what would it be? That wants to work in the health and fitness industry, yes. get educated. Um, do your research. There is a lot of stuff out there and there's a lot of research out there. So it's really important to be educated, kind of know what you're talking about and know all the different things that are going on. Be up on, you know, all the popular fads, know what's good, know what's bad and, and just do your homework. I love that you said just keep up on the trends and the popular. Mm -hmm. uh, talk about the importance of just continuing, continuing to always learn. This profession, which of course with most professions, you always have to learn. There's new stuff every single day. And you have to really be educated and, and it's all about research, you know. You you can't just assume that oh, that's the best thing in the world and that's what I need to do. And again, when you're working with clients, one of my biggest thing, it's individuality. You have got to tailor 
workouts, nutrition to an individual person. Know the personalities, get to know the people, let them trust you because that's how you're going to be successful and that's how they're going to be successful. Absolutely. Con- congratulations on the success you've had. Thank you so much for joining us this morning and, and sharing with our audience. Thanks for having me.